guys, Kelly of EBO Cosplay here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about commissions. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, this is a topic I feel like we really, I really feel the need to discuss and kind of create a video on and try and give people a little more insight as to the process of commissions, what to expect when you commission a costume from somebody, and you know, just generally create a better and broader understanding in the community as to what commissioning a costume entails. Alright guys, so when you commission a costume, you are paying somebody to make a custom garment specifically for you. When you go through this process, you are paying for somebody's time on top of materials. I feel like some people have a real un unrealistic expectation as far as what kind of prices you're gonna pay because of fast fashion. You know, you, you go to the store and you can get a, a sweatshirt for $30. You know, and you see there are online retailers, most based in China, that do sell ready-made versions of a lot of characters' costumes. If those fall within your budget already, and that's what you're kind of expecting your budget to be, buy those costumes because if I'm going to be honest with you, you're not going to be able to afford a custom version of that from a commissioner. When you commission somebody, you're paying for materials and time. And I'm going to kind of break this down for you guys a little bit because not a lot of people understand what that all entails. On average, I would say I spend $100 to $250 just on materials for commissions. And that's on the low end. That's me buying cheaper fabrics, polyesters. Um, it can go much more expensive than that if we go with silks and higher quality fabrics. And you also have to pay for a commissioner's time. So sewing and armor making and making props, everything that you see people do for commissions are specialized skills. Many of us took years to learn and develop our skills or we went to school for it you know so you have to be ready to pay for a service so because you're paying for a specialized skill you're not going to pay mid most commissioners will not take minimum wage for their specialized skill so you can expect to pay a much higher hourly rate for these types of services and this is fairly common when you are purchasing other services that are so specialized you know an electrician doesn't charge you seven dollars an hour to come take care of the electrician your home is a specialized service they charge an appropriate hourly rate for their services now some people might charge less when they're just starting off doing commissions so if they are new to the process, you need to, to think about that when you're purchasing something from someone. But most experienced commissioners are not going to take less than $15 an hour, if I'm frank. So <laughs> that's on the low end. And you're going to, when you, when you buy a commission from somebody, you're going to either pay an hourly rate or you're going to pay a daily rate. Some people do it, you know, people charge different ways. So I'm just trying to get people to have more of a realistic expectation as far as what you can expect when you're going to purchase a commission from somebody. The type of stuff you're probably going to want to commission is going to be things that are more custom uh, characters you can't necessarily find, pre-existing costumes of, um, original designs, I do a lot of Sunset Dragons designs. Um, so if you want, if that's something you want to cosplay, you're going to have to commission that if you don't make your costumes yourself. When it comes to purchasing a commission, a lot of us do offer payment plans to help you out in, you know, to make it easier to pay off a commission because most of us know it's a big ask when we send that final quote over. You might get a little bit of sticker shock sometimes depending on what you're asking for. And a lot of us are going to be really willing to work with you to break it down. Now, me, personally, when I do commissions, I'm extremely flexible with my payment plans. You can pay it off in as many plans as you want. I'm totally fine with setting up those, all those invoices specifically for you. It will be your responsibility to pay it off. But, 
you know, I'm totally cool with setting that up. It's like, all right, here's all your invoices. They're all scheduled for specific dates. It's your responsibility to pay now. And you know, not every commissioner is necessarily going to do that. Some might limit you to five payments or seven payments, but we're willing to work with you. Most of us are totally okay with that. And we understand, you know, it's, it's a big yes. Now, when you go to purchase a commission, you are going to have to do a down payment essentially. We're not going to start purchasing materials or putting that time slot aside for you without a down payment most of the time. And most of the time, in my experience, at least for me, it's going to be non-refundable. And you're going to have to put down a down payment that's going to at least cover the cost of your materials. And that's usually what I require. Some require more. Some people require 50% up front. Now that I've kind of given you a little bit of what you can expect when you pay for a commission. I think that's like the big thing that a lot of us commissioners want y'all to understand a little bit more. I talk with my hands so much, look at this. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go more into the process a little bit. So before you commission somebody, do a little research. Do, have they taken commissions in the past? Look at their past work. What have they done for previous clients? You know, are there reviews out there for them? Some of us, I have, um, testimonials on my website but there are other places online that people can review commissioners there's a Facebook group you know there's there's places you can find information or if you see them sharing a commission they made for somebody you can reach out to the person that you know you know if they've tagged the client in the photo you can reach out to that client ask them about their experience you know and that's okay like do your research you want we want you to be comfortable working with us and you know that's at least in my opinion that's totally okay like I think you should know have a kind of an idea of what you're getting into so how do I get a quote from a commissioner now most of us have online forms or emails you know we have a way where you reach out and contact us as far as getting a quote for a commission I have personally on my website give me at least a week to get back to you because for me, commission work is something I do on the side. It's supplemental income. It is not my full-time job. So, you know, give me some time to get back to you. Don't, don't fret if I don't get back to you right away. That's me personally. Some commissioners might do this full-time. They might be able to get back to you day, that day or the next day. But that might not always be the case. You know, read if they have um, an information. Some of us have websites or on our forums we might have additional information about commissioning. Read all the information before you send in the form just so you're not like, why haven't they gone back to me yet? It's been like two days. Just check. <laughs> so what kind of quality can you expect from a commission? Let's go into that now. Um, personally, I offer like multiple tiers as far as what kind of quality we're going to go with, um, different techniques and different techniques will indicate different price points on a commission so you know embroidery is going to be way more expensive than applique which is going to be more expensive than if I painted on the design you know if you're looking for something that is really elaborate with really intricate details and high level techniques that's going to cost you a lot more money because it's going to take a lot more time compared to something that is more simple techniques that maybe it's not going to take as long so you have to kind of Kind of go in knowing as far as the level of quality that you want for a costume. You know, there are different tiers as far as materials go as well. Are we going to go on the cheaper end with, you know, more polyesters, synthetic fabrics, you know, less expensive cottons? Or are you interested in getting something made out of silk or wool or, you know, something much more expensive? Most of us will work with whatever materials, you know, are in our wheelhouse. But don't, I should say, don't go to a commissioner asking them for something that they don't do. Things that aren't my strength, I'm like, hell no, I ain't gonna touch that with a 10-foot pole. So just keep in mind that something that is higher quality is gonna cost a lot more than something that is, you know, cheaper quality or simpler technique. And most of us are going to discuss these kinds of things with you. I have specifically on my forum, are you know are you, are you are you interested in high quality materials? Are you interested in 
rhinestoning and beading and extra details. Like, you know, I ask these types of things in my request form and then I can touch base with you about them. You know, and if I look at a costume and it has a specific detail that I could embroider applique or paint on, I will tell you, hey, what, what kind of techniques are you interested in? Are we interested in my lower tier or my higher tier techniques? Um, and that'll affect the amount of hours I calculate as far as when I send you a quote. Now I've talked about these forms that uh, most of us have, and a lot of us ask for things like due dates, um, your basic measurement or size, so make sure you have that on hand. Um, I, I personally ask for measurements, I ask for your bust, waist, hips, and height. Um, make sure you know those, because <laughs> some of us ask for those, some ask for your relative size, um, some of us might ask for your budget, and I, I specifically ask for a budget so I can look at that budget and be like, uh, you know, if I look at that budget I can say, I know that what I do personally may not fall within your budget, and I'm upfront with you about that, um, and you know, we can proceed, or you know, we can move about our day. It happens. Now as far as due dates go, this is a big thing that I'm going to advise people on and make your due dates like at least a month before you actually need the costume just in case something happens. We are human. All of us commissions are human. Sometimes shit happens. Literally shit happens. <laughs> Um, most of us will do our best to get your stuff to you on time. Personally, recently, I have had delays in commissions due to things being delayed because of COVID. Um, and, you know, supplies not getting to me on time. Sometimes personal life things happen. And by, by setting out a, a due date, you know, further out from your event, if there are delays, it helps make sure that you know there's a chance that you know you'll still get your piece for an event now a commissioner a good commissioner will be upfront and communicative with you about these types of things and if they're not that's a bad commissioner shame shame on you but by setting out a further out due date just in case something does come up you give yourself a buffer window so I say you know a minimum of a month buffer if you can so when you're getting ready to order something you want to make sure you plan in advance. And a lot of commissioners might have booked out six months or more already their schedule. So, you know, it's not a bad idea to look a half a year to a year in advance of when you're going to want to have something. It also gives you more time to save up or pay off uh, a commission, especially if there's someone you really want to work with, you love their work. Now, when you book commissions, some people might have a contract. I personally do, and the contract might lay out, you know, information and details about what would happen in the process of commission. So, you know, my contract kind of details out the process and has kind of stipulations in there to protect me, you know, if, if things were to happen like you didn't pay. That's a big one. What happens if you don't pay for your costume? You don't get it. <laughs> Most commissioners will ask you to finish paying off the costume before they will mail it to you. That's just kind of the way it works. And this is to protect the commissioner and protect us and make sure that we're paid for our labor because you know we're putting in lots of hours to make something for you. It's not fair to us to send it to you and then you don't finish paying for it. It's happened. I know people that have had this happen to them that they put trust in the client, they send the costume and the client never finished paying for it. If you don't finish paying it off, I can't, I can't physically send it to you, especially if I've made most of it already. Um, that's just the way it works. When you commission somebody, you're, you're holding a responsibility with them that I, we're going to complete this transaction, we're going to complete this deal. So I'm going to finish paying off my commission and you're going to finish making it for me. That's what that, that contract outlines. So let's kind of talk about communication. Now let's say you book a commissioner and my due date's not for six to eight months yet. You're not going to start working on your costume right away. Some 
might have a better set of timeline, but for me personally, I don't usually start on something until a couple months before the due date. Um, because I have other clients lined up before that. So I, you know, I kind of plan everything out and I know approximately when I'm going to start each commission and it's usually, depending on the complexity, a couple months or more before the date, depending on what the commission entails. Don't order a commission and then two months in emailing, where's my, where's my work in progress pictures? It's a good chance they haven't started it yet. And most of us will communicate with you, hey, I'm about to start on yours. You know, a lot of us might have clients lined up already that, you know, they're earlier in the queue, so they're gonna be what we work on first. So don't be distressed if you don't get updates right away about your commission. You can always kind of ask, but most of the time it's gonna be, I haven't started yet. I've ordered your materials, but you know, this is, we might give you an approximate date or month when progress will actually start on your piece. And then once we start progress, some people will take lots of work in progress pictures, some might not. Some might just try and plow through it real fast. People like me, I tend to post a lot of work in progress on Instagram. So if I'm working on something, I'll be like, oh, let me pause to take a picture and I'll throw it up on Instagram. So it's a really good idea to make sure you follow your commissioner on their social media because some of them might share work in progress directly on there. And then you can just be like, oh, look, there's my stuff. But we'll also compile things together and send you photos throughout recent commissions I've had, they've actually, they're on my Instagram and I've been able to just send it straight to them via Instagram. Super fast, super easy for me to just click and send on Instagram instead of having to sit here and upload images to an email. So fast, so it's great. Let's talk about measurements. So when you get a commission, you're going to get something that's custom made for you. That means you have to take your measurements. Most commissioners, I would think, send out instructions on how to take your measurements, I do, and when we send you info on how to take your measurements, I'm going, I send out instructions personally, but you're going to want to have somebody help you. So don't, don't try and take your own measurements, try and find a friend to help you, um, and take them more than once. But also, make sure you are wearing the undergarments that you're going to wear with the commission. So, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, if you're planning on wearing a specific bra with it, if you have, if you want to wear heels, make sure you're wearing those heels when you take your measurements. So, especially like if it's a dress, you know, when you're taking a measurement to the floor, you want to make sure if you're going to wear four inch heels, you got to be wearing those heels because if you're not, your dress is going to end up being too short. So you want to make sure that everything you're wearing when you take those base measurements is what you're wearing with the costume and that's all you want to be wearing. So you know, don't don't have a, a thick sweater on over top of your underwear, you know, that you're going to wear with your commission because then it's going to end up, the measurements are going to be too big um, and then you're going to have a costume that's too big. And if the costume ends up being too big for you and that's because your measurements were wrong, that means you're gonna have to pay to get it altered if it's incorrect. When you get a commission made, if something doesn't fit correctly, if it's at the fault of the commissioner, obviously we will fix it for you because we want you to be satisfied. We want you to be 100% happy with your costume. But if we know it's the correct measurements, if we measure it out and say, this is the measurements you gave me, then it's going to be on you to pay for those adjustments because you sent us the incorrect measurements and if the measurement is wrong that's going to affect the final product so you want to make sure that what you are sending when you get your you know when you have your measurements what you're sending is what is correct so that's why i always say have somebody help you take them twice you know really be thorough and make sure that this is the correct measurement for what they're asking. So now that kind of going off of that, what if you get your costume and you're unhappy with it? Please, the first thing you should do is contact us because we're going to want to be like, okay, how can I fix this? How can I help? Now, as I just previously established, if it's an issue with a, if the fit, if it's on us, 
we will 100% fix it for you. Otherwise, you'll have to pay for alterations and pay for our time to fix something due to an incorrect measurement. But if there's something else on the costume that you're not satisfied with, please communicate with us to uh, communicate with us and we'll do our best to make it right. We're interpreting 2D art and turning it into 3D most times. So something might not be exactly one-to-one -one with the art. And there might be reasoning behind it. So ask and talk about it. Be communicative with your commissioner. If you see something that's happening while they're building the costume that you're like, mm, not sure I really like that, say something. You know, obviously we want you to be satisfied and if you, if you don't like it, that's not good. But that's also why I say do your research with who you're working with because when you look at their past work, you do you like their past work? Yes, then you're probably gonna like what they're gonna make for you. If you're not 100% happy with their past work, you might not necessarily be happy with what they make for you. So make sure that, you know, this is a person I definitely want to work with and things like that before you dive headfirst in, especially considering usually this is a big monetary investment. But also, I want to talk about having realistic expectations. So, you know, you can ask questions with us as far as what you're going to get with your costume. We'll be happy to answer them. We can break down what specific materials uh, we're going to use, I mean, I send a full material breakdown to each client so they know, okay, this is what I'm using for the costume. If there is something specific that you want about the costume, like very specifically, you want something to look a certain way, you gotta let us know up front because we're not mind readers. We <laughs> will look at the art and interpret it in our way. All right, so now you've gotten your commission. Yay! Yay! I wore it to a con. I got tons of photos. I'm gonna post them on social media. Crediting. Crediting is super, super important. So when you finally get that commission, credit who made it for you, please. Please do this. We made the costume for you. We would like to be credited in your social media post because this helps us. This helps us to possibly get more eyes on our work, get more clientele, and you are helping to support us more by making sure that you credit that we made the costume for you. So credit, 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 credit. You know, you, you credit your photographers when they take photos of you, at least you should be. You're not. I need, I need a damn shame bell is what I need. You credit your commissioners too, but you really should be honest up front credit your commissioners. It helps us possibly bring in more clientele. I've gotten additional clientele thanks to them crediting, hey, this person made my costume for me. You are helping support us as small businesses, as, uh, as other cosplayers. Like, it's just the right thing to do. Like, credit, credit, credit. Don't be, and there's the stigma around, you didn't make your costume ignore those people okay like there is nothing wrong with buying a costume nothing wrong whatsoever with buying your costume especially if you commissioned it because if you commissioned it from somebody that means you're supporting a small artist and it's awesome like I've commissioned wigs because I hate I freaking hate making wigs okay credit your photographers credit your commissioners be transparent be upfront it's totally cool if you freaking bought stuff like, even if you bought stuff online, it's totally cool. Be honest about it. People appreciate the honesty and integrity of our costumes. And I'm going to say this flat out. Do not, do not take a costume that you commissioned and try to enter it into a craftsmanship cosplay contest. They will know. Because you have to explain how you made everything. They will know because you won't know how it's made, and most of the judges will know that you're full of shit. I think I've kind of covered everything so far. I think, I think I've managed it. I had a list down here. I think I've hit all of my talking points. Now, I could dress, if you wanna start getting into commissioning, that would be a whole nother video, and I'm sure this one's already hitting like 30 minutes at least, so. 
I might do that. I might do a separate video for that. All right, guys. I think that about sums everything up that I wanted to cover as far as commissions go. Uh, if there's anything that I missed or there's anything else you have questions about, please leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you guys are interested in getting something commissioned from me, I'm going to leave links down below to my request form for getting quotes and I'm going to leave a link down below to my website with my portfolio on it. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed my ranting about commissions and subscribe for additional cosplay content. I'm going to be doing my best to post more videos. I have got videos coming out for the next four Saturdays at least and hopefully more in between, we'll see. And I've already got them put scheduled and lined up. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, like and subscribe. Cool. Mission people, support small artists if you can. You know it's a rough time, but they need it. And if you've got the ability to, even though we're not doing cons right now, just do it. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Bye!